Good evening, everybody. We are um, thrilled that you're joining us this evening to talk about this important topic of de-sugaring our kids. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a topic that's been on my heart and mind for, for a while, but a few months ago, it really, um, I was listening to an NPR um, interview and it something about the interview just hit me and struck me and I knew that we had you know we really had to share this information so um, so here we are sharing it with you and we're really excited yes yes so so before we get going Becky and I would love to tell you a little bit about who we are and our families so um, I'm Angie I'm over on the left and that's my husband Phil and we have two kids there's uh, five and seven and I, um, I grew up surrounded by Shackley. We had, I was kind of a Shackley kid and taking the vitamins and being in, living in a house that was cleaned with the non-toxic cleaning products and all of that. Um, but then of course, you know, as an adult, I kind of decided to find my own way with, with all that <laughs> stuff. And, <laughs> and right around the time that I was finding my way back to healthy living and was around also, of course, the time I was having children. And around that same time, it was like the perfect trifecta. I, Shackley was reintroduced into my life mm -hmm. by my mom again. So um, so all of that kind of happened at one time. So I felt really, and I still do feel really grateful about that. So to, as a mom and also as a Shackley distributor, I, I feel like I live the the sugar battle every day <laughs> and, you know, trying to, I, I hear about the effects, the negative effects of it, but I'm also hearing my children want it because I tell you what, you know, I'm totally aware that sugar tastes good <laughs> and <laughs> kids like sugar before more than carrots. So, um, mm -hmm. so I've, I've really realized and what we're going to talk about tonight, I've been, I've been very aware of the enormous amount of the promotion of sugar in our culture mm -hmm. um, you know, and the effects of the sugar on the body, especially the brain. So, you know, we're really going to, we're going to cover, we're going to cover that tonight. And we're also going to talk about, it's not going to be all, you know, down in the dumps type of stuff. <laughs> we're we're going <laughs> to talk about, about how we can help our way through that. So that's right. Yeah, that's right. And my name is Becky Choate. My family's over on the um, right side of the screen. And we have actually, we're on the other end of the spectrum for parenting um, than Angie and um, have kids that are either in college or out of college. And so we're just thrilled um, to be able to share this information with you. I've had my Shackley business now for 18 years, almost 19 years, and I'm so thankful for the information I've learned about my family's health and what we can do about it. We're going to um, set the stage to kind of talk about what's happening today with our kids and our, our food and particularly sugar, but then we are going to offer some solutions. And so hang on um, until we get <laughs> to that. And we wanted to put this, um, this slide up because we want to be sure that you understand some of this information we're going to share with you is kind of alarming. Um, and some of it's like, oh my gosh, I know my kids had such and such just two days ago or, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> right, right. And so um, we just want you to know everybody is doing the best they can with the information they have. And one of our passions, Angie and I, is just to get the information out so that you can know some of the effects that can happen with sugar. And there's things here that um, Angie researched that I did not know. So, I mean, this is... Um, new information, um, things are always getting updated, you know, new studies are coming out, but we want you to be able to listen to this and take it in, but don't take on that um, mom shame kind of thing that we can do sometimes. So um, let's get into the information. Awesome, Becky, thank you. Thank you for mm -hmm. starting this off with that because that's really important to keep in mind while we go through these, yep. these important facts here. So Absolutely. I think I wanna start first by illustrating what our society and what our culture is um, with sugar. And mm -hmm. the first thing to talk about there is the food industry and how they how they go about manufacturing food. Because surprise, surprise, they don't go about manufacturing food with nutrition top of mind. Mm -hmm. So they go about manufacturing food and in turn, consumers choose food based on the taste, the flavor, and the sensory satisfaction. And all of that um, there's a term called the, the bliss point. And actually it, it appears that it's been, that it goes back to like the seventies. So it's not, that's not super new. Um, mm -hmm. But what that means is it's the precise amount of sweetness 
that makes a food and drink most enjoyable. So they use this, they, they have kids, and I'm sure they do this with adults too, but from for us tonight, they have kids taste all these different pudding flavors or all these different brands of cereal or whatever, and they find out which one is the perfect amount of sweetness, not too much, not too little, for this child to really love it and want more. But what's happening over time is that our threshold for this bliss point has become increasingly higher because sugar is becoming in everything. It's in ketchup, it's in barbecue sauce, it's in it's in pickles, it's in everything. So our right. threshold is constantly, our, the bar that we have set for how sweet we can handle keeps going higher and higher and higher. It's like the opposite of a limbo, right? <laughs> and we we expect it to be sweeter. So then the food industry comes back and they give us something sweeter. And what this is turning out to be is there, it, I, and when I think of it this way, it really actually makes me angry that they are manipulating and exploiting the biology of the, ch of the child. And they are doing it to adults too, but, right. but they're doing this to our children. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so that's what the food industry is doing. And then, you know, we also want to look at what's going on around us, like the sensory input that's coming in from advertising and specifically television ads. And I thought this was an incredible statistic that kids watch an average of 4,000 food related ads every year, 98% of which are for foods high in fat, sugar, and salt. Wow. And Angie, you and I were talking that um, because my kids are older, I don't watch as much of the kid shows anymore. Mm -hmm. um, like you know, just whatever channels those might be on. But sometimes I'll just be flipping through and I'll be like, oh my goodness, I haven't even seen any of these commercials. And they usually are <laughs> like high sugar foods or or whatever. Not that we as adults don't get that on other channels too, but they were like, it was like a whole other marketing whatever um, yeah. to introduce to our kids. And all of us know when the kids see something, you know, on TV or whatever, um, if it is intriguing to them, they, mommy, mommy, that's what I want. You know, I mean, it's hard sometimes to to get away from all that. It is. It is so hard. And we all, I mean, all of us with, with kids know that mm -hmm. the ads are influencing their, um, their desires, their wish list. Um, and I think it's interesting here, you see one 30 second commercial can influence the brand preferences of children as young as two, wow. two years old. And then in a, in a study, preschool children reported that food in McDonald's wrappers tasted better than food in plain wrappers. So all this is illustrating is that all of this advertisement is working and it's mm -hmm. also manipulating our children. Right. Sure, sure. So that's mm -hmm. scary, too. And I just love I, I, I don't love, but I I think this is a great quote to kind of illustrate what's mm -hmm. going on um, from Wayne Chalicki from General Mills. When it comes to targeting kid consumers, we at General Mills follow the Procter and Gamble model of cradle to grave. We believe in getting them early and having them for life. Wow. And you can see some of those things when you when I first saw this slide that you created, Angie, I thought it was all food, but it's not. It's it's like games and, you know, all kinds of different things. It's like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, um, it's kind of a yeah, kind of an alarming quote um, for that. And just shows how how influential um, those kinds of things can be and that our kids are in it and we're in it, you know. Right. Um, so we want to just talk about um candy givers are everywhere. And um, <laughs> if you got on before we started the um, right at the top of the hour, Angie was talking about a story where a, a nice man was wanting to give candy to her kids. And and it's a it's a cultural thing. People think that that's a nice thing to do and, and that the kids will like it. And, uh, you know, we know they'll like it. We just don't want them to have so much of it. And so um, if you've noticed, a lot of times they might have that in banks or hair salons or doctor's offices or, you know, um, any of us that have been at school parties. I mean, um, and I, I do think some schools are taking a um, a new, uh, what I want to say, bend on this and trying to have some healthier options. And um, it's not that we're trying to completely um, ban anything fun, you know, or anything that's um, got any sugar in it at all. It's just we have to, we've had exposed so much that we've got to to bring that back and have that more in like small moderation. Right. Um, it's it's a really um, it's a big deal. And sometimes moms that are trying to choose healthy choices, then they kind of get razzed when they, you right. know. Mom, 
<laughs> have apple slices or something instead. And, and they're just trying to, to provide something different. Um, and so it is, it's a, it's a tricky thing for parents, I feel like, to navigate this a little bit. Um, and I remember our pediatrician used to say, you just keep providing um, really good, healthy food for your kids. Limit the snacks at home because they're going to get the snacks and, and, and sugar other places. And I thought in a, in the world that we live in, I mean, that's, that is a, um, a good kind of moderation. Like they're going to get that other places. We can't protect them, you know, everywhere, but, um, just to try to keep the things that they, you offer them at home to be really healthy and whole. Um, yeah. so here's another, oh, go ahead, Angie. Oh, no, go ahead and keep going. Okay. okay. Um, so here is another slide, and this is one of those, like, whoa. Um, <laughs> this is one of those information things that you're like, oh, my gosh, I didn't know that. Um, so if you're wondering what the big deal is about sugar, um, this is what it is. <laughs> there are over 12 million children um, that are ages 2 to 19 that are obese, um, I want to interject something. I just heard um, somebody was saying that they were talking to a military personnel and that they were saying that when people, when 18 year olds are applying to go into the armed forces, that percentage of acceptance is getting lower and lower and lower because of obesity in our teens. And, and so many times those patterns are start started as young children. And so it's really an important um, piece of information. This slide is, is really important. It's alarming, but it's important for us to know. Um, so children are entering adulthood 18 pounds heavier than they were 40 years ago. Um, here's one before 1990, 4% of children had type 2 diabetes, and now we've got 45% in these high-risk groups. Um, the next to the last one I think is really um, just hit, hits close to home as a mom and as a parent because if a 50-year-old is diagnosed with diabetes, that reduces their life expectancy by six years. But if a 10-year-old is diagnosed with diabetes, that could reduce their life by 19 years. And any mom would say they want their children to live the, the fullest, most wonderful life possible. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, we don't want anything to to shorten that by any means. And um, and I know it it seems crazy that all this can be by sugar, but it actually really can happen. And the last statistic about cancer too is just, it's, it is really alarming. And so that's why we're doing this tonight because we want to be sure to get the information out there so that you're better prepared. Um, so Angie's got this cool slide that she's gonna go through. <laughs> so this is, <laughs> so, so now that we know kind of what's going on outside externally, that's, that's creating, um, creating the buzz of sugar all around us that we some some of it we can and some of it we cannot control it's good to kind of look into ourselves and figure out why this is such a big deal mm -hmm. like physically in our brains and so this is a very simplified if we have like scientists and doctors listening like i i apologize this is a very <laughs> and i use like the kiss symbol tongue but like this is a very simplified version <laughs> so so it's good. when Thank you. I mean, it's kiss simple tongue is fun, right? Um, <laughs> so when we eat sugar, and especially when we pair it with salt and fat, that's like the ultimate party in our mouth. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing that happens is that it hits our neurons, or which are our taste buds on our lips or on our tongues. I'm sorry. And then mm -hmm. the next thing, so that's going to send um, messages to our brain which is going to then release opioids or endorphins. This mm -hmm. is the same thing that happens when we take heroin or other opioids. Which and is then, scary. Which is scary. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because we've heard, I don't know if you've heard, but I've heard before that sugar affects the same part of our brain as heroin and opioids. And this mm -hmm. is part of that. So, so when those opioids and endorphins are released, we have a sensation of pain and stress relief. And from there, more endorphins are being released from that relief of stress, which creates us or which makes us want more cake. And mm. so we eat more and then that cycle just keeps on going. And mm -hmm. um, our, our, I heard something on the radio today. It was like, our stomachs are down there shouting, like, I'm full, I'm full. And your brain is like, but it's so good. I have to keep eating it. <laughs> <Right>. like, <laughs> so like, this is, this is what's going on. So at the mm -hmm. same time that this endorphin cycle is going on, 
um, there's another thing happening. So you eat the cake, it, it touches your, your taste buds, which sends a message to your brain, which then creates dopamine to increase. And mm -hmm. when dopamine increases, we feel good. And when we feel good, we don't want to stop feeling good. We want to keep eating cake so that we keep having this feel good, pain, stress, relief sensation. And right. that's the addictive nature of sugar. I love this explanation because I feel like it really does explain um, in a simplistic manner, like you said, Angie, what is happening. And um, it's interesting when you said that, um, that you're your stomach is saying, I'm full, I'm full. Have, <laughs> has anybody ever had something like whether it was, um, you know, ice cream or something like that, where this is, um, th well, I'm just going to tell you, this is one of the things that goes through my brain. Sometimes I'm like, you know what, I know this isn't that good for me. I'm just gonna go ahead and eat it all now. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's gonna help. Right. But there's something about that, like, well, I'm just going to get it out of the house. And I'm going to go ahead and eat it instead of throwing it away way, which is silly. But, um, but it's probably because my brain is stuck in this cycle. And it's like, well, it tastes good. I'm just gonna go ahead and eat all this right here and be done with it. But um, I really appreciate that explanation, Angie. Um, yeah, I think it kind of helps, especially a simpler version sometimes helps at least my brain wrap my head around all of yep. that. So, <laughs> so if our brain wasn't doing all of that, like if we weren't having those cycles, none of these other things would really be that big of a deal because we might have a piece of cake and, and maybe it'd be smaller and then we'd be done with it. Right. Mm -hmm, but because mm -hmm. we keep eating, because we are consuming sugar way more than we should be, this other stuff is happening. Mm -hmm. See, go back to that slide, Becky. Um, so what's happening in, for the rest of our body is our blood sugar, sugar is spiking, which is going to cause poor focus, lack of attention. Now, remember, what, let's, we're talking about kids here. So so think about our, our little kids who, right. you know, are in school or they are, um, you know, trying to listen at dinner or something like that. So this mm -hmm. is creating poor focus, a lack of attention and abil inability to settle down for sleep or relaxation. I, I hear mm -hmm. a lot of parents complain about sleep um, and that's already an issue <laughs> that right. we're going to, you know, throw sugar on top of it. Um, mm -hmm. So it also contributes to inflammation and inflammation is linked to arthritis, diabetes, allergies, digestive issues. And some of these things like arthritis, you might be like, well, that's really not an issue for my 10 year old. And the, the thing about, about this um, conversation is that there are things that it affects right now, day to day, the, the mm -hmm. lack of attention type of things, but there are, we are preparing our child for the next you know, 80, 90 years of their life. Right. And so what we are, um, we're helping them. Our, our job is to help them build healthy habits and in, in education and in manners and in faith and in all these other areas. It's mm -hmm. also in their, in their, um, their diet. And mm -hmm. so if, if we're overloading them with sugar now, and it's creating inflammation issues now, it, it could cause some of these issues to happen earlier on in their life that you could have a 30 year old with arthritis right. or, you know, and, and, and so it's some, some of these issues might sound like they're older people issues, but they may not be, or they also right. may be able to be warded off a little earlier on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. It also feeds candida yeast and other bad bacteria in the gut. And when, what happens when there's more bad bacteria in our intestines than good bacteria that can lead to digestive issues. Um, autoimmune diseases are usually linked back into that intestines, mm -hmm. weakened immune systems, migraines, depressions. I mean, the, there is so much out there right now and it's come more studies come out all the time about the importance of the microbiome in our intestines. And you know what I hear commonly actually for children too, that can be a result of this um, candida yeast is eczema in children. Mm, that happens right. a lot. And um and we'll, we're going to talk later about what we can do about that. But that, that is something um, that you often hear about eczema in children. And that can be, um, you know, because of that candida yeast and sugar just feeds that. It just kind of makes it multiply. Yeah. Well, and mm -hmm. eczema is kind of an infl inflammatory issue as well. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, sugar feeds cancer cells. That statistic, that little blurb alone freaks me out about sugar. Yeah. That it's that it's feeding the cancer cells. It depletes nutrients from the body. Um, and then it weakens the immune system that kind of goes back to that bacteria in the gut thing. Mm -hmm. And then it can, too much sugar can overwork our organs, such as the pancreas and our liver. I mean, that's, 
that's some serious stuff there. So. Right. Those are important for long Lots life. Of things. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, our organs to work. Um, <laughs> so you know, when in some people think uh, low sugar, no sugar is 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 better, but but things have to be to taste good too. So companies will then use artificial sugar to replace. Mm -hmm the um the real sugar and i think a lot of this becky i think we we're talking about this where mm -hmm. you know there the you may remember the fad in like the 80s and maybe some of the 90s was was this uh was a no fat fad right so right. then they added a ton of sugar and including a lot of artificial sugar to make things taste better and so um aspartamine is one of the main uh, artificial sugars that we hear mm -hmm. about a lot and I think it's important to note that um, in 2009, this just, it was shown that 100% of all the studies show, showing no negative effects of aspartame were industry funded. You know, some people say, mm -hmm. oh, that's all, that's, you know, that's all been disproven. Oh, and interesting. Apparently, mm -hmm. apparently, it was all disproven by people that had an, uh, you know, an investment in it. Sure. Being it, <laughs> disproven. Mm -hmm. So what's also interesting about artificial sugar is that our human, the human body can't digest them. So that's mm -hmm. what makes them have no calories is that we're not digesting them and absorbing them. But they that's still not, have. Yeah. Where do they go? Right. <laughs> they still have to. Well, they just kind of like go out with the rest of our, you know, bowel movements and stuff. But they have to pass through the gut in order to do that. And while they're mm -hmm. there, they're wreaking havoc on our gut. So mm -hmm. they are. They're like having a party on their little, you know, time, tra time travel through our body. They're like, this is right. so much fun. I don't have to go anywhere. <laughs> and, um, right. And then there's also research that's showing that the, that the increase for the risk of type two diabetes is, um, there is higher with artificial sugars than from real sugar. Wow. So that's really just artificial sugars mm -hmm. are one, um, we, we try to stay away from as a family. And I really think that, um, we're going to, be hearing more and more research all the time of why we should all be staying away from that. You bet. And that's just one of the things that I have really appreciated um, learning about in my kind of journey with Shackley and health is just all the, the diet information that we've learned. And um, anyway, I, I, all those things were not necessarily known quantities to me until, you know, um, I entered into the Shackley world. So it's, it's just really good information. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about what we're drinking. And um, I love this title, Soda, Juice, and Sports Drinks. Oh my! Um, <laughs> because it can be kind of, um, again, a little bit like, whoa, I didn't realize there was that much sugar in there. And um, I don't know, you may have seen pictures too, where someone will have a picture of a soda and then next to it, it'll show what eight and two thirds teaspoon looks like, you know, I mean, it's a, ton, it's a lot of sugar mm -hmm. um, to have in one drink. So we really want to watch um, the things that people that we're drinking. And um, one of the things that um, Angie and I wanted to just to say is just, you know, um, you are the model as the parent and, and you're also usually the purchaser. And so we can control um, what we bring into our homes. Um, but look at just some of the things that are happening with these drinks. There's um, they're drinking the sugar, actually not feeling any sense of, of um, like their thirst is quenched. In fact, a lot of times when people have soda, they're more thirsty because it's dehydrating them. Um, there's no fiber in them. Uh, so it's not helping any type of digestion or, or um, making uh, anything bulkier inside of us. It's got all kinds of harmful ingredients. A lot of times they have artificial sweeteners and preservatives and um, flavors. Um, some of them have caffeine and then um, chocolate milk. You know, it is, it is not necessarily this great thing because it has the word milk attached to it, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so just really um, being aware of what um, it, you're drinking too. Um, so we just want to be sure as we are moving into the next section, um, <laughs> hang on, because it does not have to be all doom and gloom. There are things that we can do. And that's the good news, that there's lots of things that we can do as parents. Um, and uh, we talked about it earlier, just about every parent is doing the very best that they can in with the information that they have. And some of the things now that we're going to be talking about 
um, even if you just uh, tried a few of these things and kind of got those under your belt as a as a good healthy habit and then later added a few more and then added a few more because it wouldn't um it would be overwhelming for you as the parent and also your kids if you tried to do all these different things um, at once and so um, we want to encourage you in that um, so what do we do now we've heard all this information about um, sugar and and um, that it's not good, and so what are we going to do? And we want to just remind you that food experiences are to be enjoyed. Um, when Angie and I were talking about this um, webinar, we just really talked about the, um, you know, just the enjoyment of being around the table with your family and sharing your day. And you want, as a mom, you want everybody to be enjoying what they're eating, and you can still do that. It just is sometimes having to tweak different things um, in order for um, your kids to to be able to experience um, these healthy foods. Um, we talked about this just in the last slide, lead by example. You know, um, you don't have to um, replace every single sugar filled thing in your house, but make some some choices like, you know what, I think um, this is a is a good version that, you know, the kids like this, it's, it's healthy for them, you know, start with some of those things, making those healthy choices at restaurants, and then being a model for um, what you drink at home, um, if you can replace it. And so, you know what, I'm going to challenge myself not to have, I have friends that used to have a Diet Coke every day or something, and, and that's a great habit to set a goal to break, so that it, first of all, it costs a lot less, and um, you're being a really good model for your kids, um, but Angie, you talk about this next part. Um, yeah, and you know, I, I just one other thing on the lead by mm -hmm. example thing, I, I, I think there's, a, you know, if, if, if Coke, like that was your example, is like something that you just, you feel you can't mm -hmm. give up and it, you're having a hard time with it. I, I think <clears throat> if it has to be something in your life, <clears throat> like give yourself some grace, it's okay. Like, but it's do it when you're not around your children, you know, when you're out to lunch with your coworkers or, or on your, on, you know, in the car on the way to work or something, just because it sends a very mixed message. I think when, sure. you know, and, and I think, and I just think that there, therefore there's some balance there for you. You don't feel like you're, you know, being deprived while you're also working on these other things for mm -hmm. your family and, and stuff like that. So great. Point. Um, so getting the kids involved is, is can make this fun. Um, and what we talked about with our kids is a concept and I got it from a book and I was trying to remember the name of the book, but I can't remember it. Um, growing food, fun food and treat food. So we, so growing foods are, are things like, you know, vegetables and fruits and things that, you know, Mm -hmm. that, that nourish us and um, that we, we of course want more growing food than anything else fun foods are things like pizza or cheeseburgers things that may have some nourishment but really for the most part they're they're not mm -hmm. food that we should be eating all the time sure and treat foods are things like your easter candy or um you know birthday cake things like that are that are just a treat, like an, an every once in a while kind of thing. And I think putting them into those terms for the kids kind of helped them be able to enter the conversation and also um, understand a little bit more. Sure. So that's how we do it. There's tons, like I, I, I actually had a lot more ideas on this slide, but then I'd be talking for an hour just on that topic. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of ways you can, you can kind of take that concept and have it fit your family and, sure. and the ages of your kids, but cooking with them is is fun and it's not doable for every meal all the time uh, in our lifestyles. But um, but it's really fun to cook with them. Maybe even especially on like a a meal that might be a new kind of meal, mm -hmm. one that they haven't had before, because it really starts to desensitize them. Like the the, the touching the foods and peeling the foods and smelling them. Like mm -hmm. they're they're using all of their senses to really like understand this food and and uh, it might make them more willing to try it. I think, so, too, I think there's like a, a pride part in that too. Like I, yeah. look at me, I made this, I'm going to taste it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. so I and love that. You, you know what, Becky, even if they don't taste it, I feel like there has been positive work. Yes, happening. that's true. Um, mm -hmm. So, I, you know, we have, we have, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more, but so meal planning with them is, is fun. It's also really helpful because they feel like they have a say, you know, mm -hmm. kids don't have a lot of say in what they eat. And so when they can say, you know, I think my favorite meal is, you know, 
chicken and broccoli and that's what we should have on Thursday night, then, you know, okay, sounds great, Billy, let's do it, you know, kind of thing. It makes them feel like they are part of the family. Um, eating dinner together on a regular basis, that family time, if it's not dinner, maybe it, maybe it can be breakfast or um, lunch on the weekends. I know everybody's so busy with after school activities, but if you can find it, um, a way to have meals together on as a family, that makes a really big difference. Mm -hmm. And then um, just looking for hidden sugars. I was surprised at how much sugar is in sauces and dips and snacks. And I mean, they're just like these sugars everywhere. And I was kind of, I was going through the grocery store yesterday, just kind of checking other brands out. And um, it was alarming some of the things I wouldn't have thought would have a high amount of sugar, but there's decent substitutes for. So sure, sure. Good point. So um, kind of like to Becky's point earlier in this section, um, we are th throwing a lot of ideas of solutions at you all. And I, as at least myself, when I decide I want to make a change for me and or my family, sometimes I can want to take on the world. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm going to become, you know, I'm going to work out seven days a week and I'm going to, like, I'm going to start running four, yeah, four miles a day. And I'm going to, you know, go up to school and volunteer eight hours. And like, you know, it's like everything. I just, I take it all on. And what happens is like, I just, I can't do it. And yes. I, I start to like feel like a failure and then everybody's unhappy because I'm crabby mm -hmm. and you know, it's just like nothing right. works. And so I give up. So there's a lot of ideas in the next two slides on substitutions and I'm mm -hmm. not going to run through all of them, but you know, feel free to take a screenshot of this, of the next two screens um, mm -hmm. because there are some ideas here. Just pick a couple and, and maybe try them out um, one or two. Too. And I know some of them are going to be harder to do for, for the working parents, and maybe they take a little um, extra time on the weekends to do them. But uh, there's some really, you know, some easy swaps out here, too, that that we have. And um, and let's see, you know, I was going to pull out some of them, but there's, you know, you can read them through. One, one thing to just kind of have top of mind is vegetables, trying to find a way to get vegetables either in snacks or um, making the plate on your, you know, the dinner plate have be full of vegetables or half full, you know, full, half full of vegetables. Um, I think it's really important to note that we should not make the dinner table a battleground. And it's mm -hmm. so hard, you know, we, we create know. this meal and like, we want our kids to eat it because we just spend so much time making it and, <laughs> and they're supposed to eat their veggies. And if you don't eat your veggies, I'm going to like go to like the, this place and I'm going to be, you know, I'm like, <laughs> so <laughs> like, I, it, it becomes this thing, like, I know you're still hungry. Why won't you eat your cauliflower? Um, but the, all of, like, when we go down that road, it just makes the, the dinner table and the meal an unpleasant experience. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's some repercussions emotionally that are just not worth that effort. We talk a lot about listening to your body. So if they tell me that they're full, I, I, they have to, at our house, they have to take three bites to make an informed decision that that bullet point okay. is out there. So if they've taken their three, their three bites and they still don't like it, we can move on. But if they mm -hmm. also tell me that their bodies are full, I want them to learn to feel that and to be okay with that and not overstuff themselves. Um, that's just been our decision at our house, but, um, sure. to, you know, um, and then, uh, not, not becoming a short order cook is, is something that is good for a lot of reasons, but you know, at our house, this is this is your meal, and if if you don't like it, then you know, there's breakfast in the morning. Um, so far, my kids have not starved, and <laughs> um, you know, there's a, an, another way you can do that, if, especially if you really are are worried about their 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 eating, like they mm -hmm. you really worry that they're not going to eat enough. Is um, if you're making something, let's use the chicken and broccoli example, and you know they don't, they're probably not going to eat chicken and broccoli, but you have some leftover um, mashed potatoes from last night. Maybe put a couple bites of that on their plate so that they have that positive uh, correlation with the other foods and that they have something to eat. So they are able to enjoy the family dinner. You're not feeling like they're going to bed completely starving. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, it just kind of makes it a little bit happier at the dinner table. Absolutely. 
So um, a few more general tips, and I and sometimes I think that these are really great for for our picky kids, <laughs> um, which can be the most difficult to to kind of get on board with all of this. But um, so I and a while ago I talked to two different occupational therapists for some ideas on how to help the families I work with with their picky children, and this. Uh, some of these examples came up in both of these conversations. So presenting the food 10 to 15 times in a year before assuming the child doesn't like the food in question, because we all know that our children are very fickle, and one day blue is their favorite color and the next day blue is the worst color. So the same thing could go for food. Well, and you know what, Angie, there is, um, I'm not going to be able to say it right, and I didn't look it up. I should have looked it up before <laughs> we got on tonight, but um, there is, um, out there information about how often your cells in your tongue turn over so your taste buds are oh. literally changing and I think it's like every 11 days or something I mean, it's kind of a high rate of turnover oh, and so I would say you know what I just wonder if your taste buds have changed and you might want to try this again today and yeah. that was helpful for our household anyway you know that's um that is really good and we say that sometimes sometimes you don't like it right now, but you might in a couple of years. You might next week. We don't know. And the exactly. other day, J Joey was like, you know what? Joey's my seven-year-old. He's like, you know what? I I think I really would like to start liking vegetables more. I think I need to oh. work on that. <laughs> <laughs> Every mom wants to, their kids to say what Joey says. <laughs> well, yeah, but then I, like the next night, I'm like, can I remind you of what you said last <laughs> night about vegetables? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Should have gotten that on tape because I, I think that was a, a fleeting a fleeting desire there. Yes, yes. Um, using gradual exposure strategies kind of goes back to the cooking with them, and if they're um, having a lot of experience with the food, that helping helps desensitize them to a food that might be an unknown or an, an unliked food. Um, or sometimes you it depends on how picky your kid is, but sometimes just asking them to give the food a kiss or to cut it up for you or to feed it to sure. you. Um, or just take one bite and mm -hmm. next, just this week, all you have to do is take one bite of your scrambled eggs and, uh, and next week I'm going to ask you to take two, you know, kind of like mm -hmm. prepare them. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that can be really helpful. Positive words only, um, things like, uh, I've heard, I, and I've done it myself where we like a food might be kind of spicy and we might say, oh, you're probably not going to like that. Well, that's already setting them up for not liking it. Sure. So, um, and then we have a rule where in our house, you don't say anything like, this is so gross. Like we can't be, you know, don't, don't have mean words about the food. If you have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but so, and then also that comes from the parents too. So if, mm -hmm. if they hear us talking and that also goes for how we talk about, um, about health. And I think uh, I, I talk about this in a few more bullet points down, but I think this is an important point to make that sometimes we can take all of this a little too far. And mm -hmm. when we're always talking about, oh, no, 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 honey, that has too much sugar. Oh, no, 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 no honey, that's, you know, sure. that's not good for you. Um, or they hear us say, oh, I feel fat. Or they might hear us say, um, you know, just anything negative ab around health or how mm -hmm. we're trying to be healthy, but we might be saying it in an un, un, unhealthy way, um, that can that can kind of lead to some negative things as well. So sure. Uh, let's see, then I kind of covered a lot of these things, but um, remember, I think this is the last point is really, really important to make. And I want people to, to remember, and I, I have to remember it myself too, almost daily, mm -hmm. that the long-term goal here is that we grow kids that have wide palates that can appreciate health and make healthy choices and they can make positive choices as they grow our mm -hmm. goal isn't to have a checklist on our refrigerator that you know billy ate five vegetables and and you know 50 grams of protein right and, you know eight ounces of this of milk and whatever you know like we don't like we don't need to grade ourselves daily on 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 this um our goal really is to create a very positive environment around health and, and children that can appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And just like those general principles, you know, oftentimes what we teach our kids when they're younger, they're going to remember and implement when they're older. And even mm -hmm. if they like my kids ages where they don't have children yet, 
um, if there's some parts of their health story because we've we you know slowly made changes along the way as they were growing up, um, you know, I think they're going to want those for their kids. You know what I mean? Like they all of a sudden now when they become a parent now they're the model. So it's like oh yeah I need to probably be doing that. So it's it's all those things we're 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 pouring into our next generations even by doing these. Yeah, it's so for good. Sure. So good, Angie. So let's talk a little bit about the role of supplements and what they do. And um, really, the biggest thing is they are filling in our gaps because a lot of our food um, that we purchase is nutritionally depleted. And um, I don't have the exact statistic, but some um, you can look up to see kind of um, studies about our soil today and our soil 100 years ago. And actually, it was much healthier and more uh, mineral and, and nutrient dense 100 years ago. And so even though we may eat the same things that our great grandparents ate um, in, from their gardens and from our gardens or whatever, we may still not get what they got because our food is just depleted. So we need ways to be able to to pour that in in um, through supplements. And and we know sometimes our diets aren't ideal. And then these supplements also can help stop those sugar cravings. And the very first ones that we want to talk about are kind of those basic multivitamins. And we've got two on the screen here. One um, on the left is our Incredivites. And as you can see from the little superpower character, <laughs> that is more for children. <laughs> and um, we're wanting to entice them. And every um, little uh, chewable uh, multivitamin has like a little um, superhero symbol or something. And so you can be creative parents about, you know, let which one do you want today or which power do you want or whatever. Um, but these multivitamins are packed with nutrition. Um, they have um, 25, or excuse me, 23 vitamins and minerals. They've got a natural sweetener that's going to be beneficial for their dental health. We've talked about sugar, which is, you know, of course, bad for dental health. So we want something that's good for it. This is going to fill in those gaps. It's going to give them a really good foundation. And of course, no artificial ingredients. The one on the right is our actually our adult multivitamin. But this is what was interesting when I, um, I found this out when I came to Shackley, that the nutritional needs of a 12-year-old are the same as an adult. And so um, let's say that you have um, a 10-year-old that can swallow. Uh, pills. This is a great one for them to switch over to. And um, they may only need just one tablet, but if they can swallow, they can take that. It's highly absorbable. That's one of the things we're going to, um, you're going to learn about the Shackley Nutrition is that the science behind it is incredible. Um, so not only are we giving um, whole organic foods in pill form uh, with these supplements to our kids, it's also very readily absorbed in their system. And so they are just benefiting from all of that. And literally, I feel like our cells are are just soaking it up when we when we get that. To them. <laughs> um, and it's really affordable, um, very affordable for both of those. So that's our multis. Then we want to look at our fish oil choices, because this is a big deal for brain health. And um, you know, actually, when I was, um, my youngest son is 20. So 20 years ago, we, I didn't hear a lot about fish oil and in the, in the impact on the brain, but it's really a big deal and DHA. So look at that um, quote um, at the top from the grain brain. DHA acts like a warrior in so many ways when it enters the hostile territory brought on by a poor diet and it can block the damaging effects of a high sugar diet. So how wonderful to have, again, some solutions to help in the midst of our um, kind of sugar coated culture. So um, the one on the left is our Mighty Smarts. It looks like a starburst. That's the kind of shape it is. And it's chewy like a, um, it's probably softer than a starburst, but that kind of, <laughs> here I am illustrating with candy, <laughs> but that's, kind of, everybody knows what a starburst is. Um, <laughs> and so, um, but it is, <clears throat> excuse me, orange flavored and kids love them. Um, it really helps give them that DHA that they need, regulates inflammation. Awesome. Then again, we've got the Omega Guard, which is our adult um, fish oil. But again, if kids can swallow, this is a wonderful one for them to take. Um, it includes the DHA and the EPA. We have in Shackley a triple molecular distillation process. And that is a big deal when it comes to fish because there are so many contaminants like mercury and lead in our oceans and waters. And so um, Shackley goes to great lengths to um, find the most pure fish they can. And then actually when we when we get that um, 
fish oil in, then we're going to do our own um, distillation of it to make sure it's absolutely top notch um, for your um, for all of us. Then we've got Optiflora. And um, that is our pre and probiotic. And we talked a little bit about this before when we mentioned um, uh, eczema, that sometimes candida yeast can lead to a lot of different um, health issues. And this product is so helpful. In fact, you are probably hearing a little bit more about it just in uh, commercials about um, probiotics and acidophilus. But I'm going to tell you how ours is special because it really is quite extraordinary. So you've got that picture there with the three layers. Shackley has all of these dormant bacteria in the in the very center of the, um, it's like a little pearl you can see over on the right. It's just, that's how big they are. They're just teeny tiny little pearls. So it's great for kids and adults to take. Um, but it is triple encapsulated. So the first layer goes off, comes off when you um, swallow it and it's going down your esophagus. The second layer um, comes off when it enters the stomach acid. And then the third layer pops open in your intestine. So you are guaranteed to have all of these live bacteria in your gut. And um, some people have asked me, um, they'll be looking at labels and they'll say, well, I'm not really sure about Shackley's Optiflor because their, um, their bacteria count isn't as high as this other brand. And um, I'm going to tell you that a lot of um, studies went into this and Shackley feels like because we have guaranteed that all of these bacteria are going to make it all the way through the gut, they do not have to have as many. But other brands often do put in more because they think that a lot of theirs are going to die in the stomach acid. So it's important to know kind of the difference in that, that um, of what when you're reading those labels, what that means. Um, those these acidophilus are so fragile and we need to make sure that they pass through the stomach acid. Um, and then I, the last um, point that healthy microbiome can affect this hormone uh, Gre ghrelin, is that how you pronounce it, Angie? Ghrelin? I think so, yeah. Like ghrelin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which really helps, um, or it that is helping to uh, main, uh, impact that hormone, which is going to impact the appetite. And so we want to be sure, again, we're, we're uh, clicking into all these things with how um, we want to have a really good environment for our kids in their diet. So we want to also talk about protein. It doesn't have to be... Um, ketchup drenched or whatever. <laughs> um, and Shackley has amazing protein options for you that are really very tasty. Um, the first three you can see are shakes there and you can read at the bottom what's different about um, each of them, but they all, um, and even in the catalog, you can ask your Shackley distributor for the catalog or look online just to see um, kind of some of them are going to have more carbohydrates than others. Some of them are good for baking, um, but they are really good. And we have um, all kinds of recipes that kids love that you can add um, vegetables in. In fact, if they don't like vegetables, this is a great way for them to be able to get more vegetables in their diet is by putting them in a smoothie with one of these protein powders. Um, then over on the side, we have really good meal bars, snack bars, and snack crisps. And um, they are very, very tasty. In fact, um, kids, uh, you know, my kids are older, but like kids that might come over with some of my friends that have younger kids, I mean, they'll kind of think it's like candy, but it really is a protein bar. It's something that's very nutritious for them. Um, so those are great for lunches. If any of you have um, kids that are athletes, um, these are wonderful things to be able to eat right before a game or or hold them over after school before practice or whatever. Um, so the, the shakes sometimes can be great for mornings because you can help them prepare that. But those meal and snack bars um, and then those snack uh, crisps um, are really nice things to be able to have too. And, and I feel like for me, Angie, this this section over here is just really helpful for the busy parents. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I, I totally agree with that. I, the, for, for the parents to consume, but also for the child and um, yes. they can make lunches a lot faster to make because you can throw in a meal bar or a, a, a snack bar. And, you know, we, for a, a while, we had an after school activity that was really like we had to pick them up from school and zip right over there and it made our dinner late and all of that. And I would give the kids a snack bar on our way there and that really helped them get through mm -hmm. it. And, and I, I know that lots and lots and lots of kids have really busy after school activities and these are 
great things. And you know, the other thing I want to say about protein mm -hmm. is that it is, it's a really important thing to make sure we're getting at breakfast. And I kind of should have said this before when we talked about food swaps, but um, it's really important for our kids to have a really rich protein in the morning and many breakfasts, if a lot of people don't have breakfast in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, and then if they do, a lot of people have something that's very high in carbs or sugars um, and, and low in nutrients. And these protein shakes are very fast to make. Um, I also can, and we'll talk a little bit about this on the next slide, but I also sometimes just throw them in a scoop in the oatmeal for the kids or in their yogurts mm -hmm. um, to add some protein to them. But it really helps with the brain. It helps with focus. And the, the Shackley protein has been shown to uh, not, it's, it's low glycemic, so it doesn't do these blood sugar spikes. And, but, you know, there is a natural spike in the blood sugar when you eat something. And, but it just kind of, gently lowers it back down so they don't go mm -hmm. through that crash that they might from a bagel. It's really important. It's such a good point. Yeah. So um, one of the things that we do with our protein is we make these things called energy protein bites. And they are super, super popular in my house. Mm -hmm. In fact, my husband gave up peanut butter for Lent and I made a batch of these and he was so angry. He's like, I can't have any. <laughs> But I'll tell you, they lasted a lot longer because he couldn't eat them. Um, <laughs> so they make this, this recipe makes about, and I always mean to count them, but about 30. Mm -hmm. So, um, and they're really great. I throw them in my, it's like two will fill you up because of that peanut butter and the protein. But I put, I put a couple in the lunchbox to give them some protein, but it's also sure. kind of like a sweet, you know, because of that honey. So it mm -hmm. feels like a dessert. I take them with me in the car. That's another thing I do on the way to um, after school activities. They're a great snack. Um, they, they're just, and they're fun to make with the kids because they, they can make them. Um, yeah. I, I add the protein to plain unsweetened yogurt to give it some flavor that, um, that also gives it some protein. The kids love mm -hmm. that. Um, I, I, we make rolled or steel cut oatmeal on the stovetop and I'll add some of the protein shake to that. Uh, you can, we have great recipes for pancakes, uh, where we, where we add the protein to the pancakes, you can add the protein to muffins. I've heard of people adding it to soup. And especially I can see this being great in like a, a pureed soup. And the, just to add some protein to that. And mm -hmm. especially, I mean, think of, you know, if, if you have kids with some texture issues, that could be a great way to get protein in them. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> while we are helping our children <laughs> detox from sugar, <laughs> exactly, we might, and, and, it's, and even if we're working on ourselves at the same time, that, that could sometimes be a little bit testy on us. So uh, we're going to need some pa patience while we work through this process. Mm -hmm. And we're going to want it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. My grandma you, uh, used to have like a needle point or whatever those are called on her wall. And it's it, when I was a little girl, I just was like, I didn't understand that. And I finally got it as an adult. <laughs> I get that. <laughs> um, I love it. So, so for, so for the parents, we really, we really love our Vitalizer product. And you can see that on the screen. It's a daily strip of vitamins. It's going to include the Vitaly that Becky talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. It's going to include your omegas, which are combined in the same tablet as your carotenoids and vitamin E. It's going to include vitamin B and vitamin C in that yellow tablet there. And vitamin B really helps with stress. It helps with energy. It helps with blood sugar levels. So it's a really great one. And then it also has that probiotic, that little white dot there. That's your probiotic. Mm -hmm. So it covers a lot of what we um, have talked about already in a nice daily strip. And it does a lot of amazing things for energy and stress. Um, we believe that uh, be an extra bottle of B-complex has been very helpful. I take a couple extra in the afternoon to kind of mm -hmm. continue my energy levels. Uh, a lot of moms <laughs> will say that this has turned every mother into Mother Teresa. <laughs> and I'll tell you a real quick little blurb. My mom, back in the early 80s, was a very stressed out mother. And this was her first product, was B-Complex. And mm -hmm. she has not stopped taking it since. Yeah. Uh, so it is a really wonderful product. But it's also helpful for this blood sugar, all the, the cravings and things like mm -hmm. that. So that's why it's, it's important to include. 
And then we have something called stress relief complex, and it is exactly what it sounds like. It's an herbal product that helps relieve your stress. You take it when you feel stress coming on, or you know you're going into a stressful situation, and it just kind of gives you that gentle, like, ah, okay. Yes, a deep but breath. It, yeah, a deep breath, but it doesn't make you drowsy. Um, mm -hmm. And it is just, it's a, a lot of, a lot of moms keep it in their purse. Yeah. So um, I have a lot of people that work um, outside of the home and they keep it in their desk drawer. So this is, uh, it's a, it's a really wonderful product here. Mm -hmm. And when, you know, we're talking a lot about a lot of things on here and the, the Shackley products, if you're not familiar with Shackley yet, I, I want to make sure that you do here tonight, why Becky and I, and the person that invited you to this call, love Shackley and why we really believe that these products are going to deliver what we say they're going to deliver. And at Shackley, we, we have something we call the Shackley difference. And that is that we are safe, proven, and guaranteed. And by safe, Shackley um, has other, one of their mottos is that we are in harmony. We're working in harmony with nature. And at Shackley, they conduct over 100,000 quality tests each year before, during, and after production mm -hmm. to make sure that the safety is there so that there are no contaminants, uh, either in the raw material or put in by the machines during production or afterwards for some reason. And that is so important, especially when we're talking about giving these products to our kids. Exactly. You know, uh, there will be no lead in your products. And there, the FDA has an acceptable amount of lead. And there are many vitamins out there, mm -hmm. children, prenatal, and adult, that have lead in them. You will not find lead in Shackley products. Mm -hmm. uh, they test for pesticides and contaminants. They don't test on animals. That is a really important part. Proven, when we say proven, we are proven by science. So we're living in harmony with nature, but we are proven by science. And at Shackley, they have more than 120. I think the number now is up to 129. Am I right, Becky? Or 27. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Published clinical studies and abstracts. 71 patents and patents pending. Uh, we have so many studies on so many different things and different age groups and different um, lengths of studies that you can feel confident that not only are your products safe, but we know that they're safe because of the scientific studies and we know they're going to work because of the scientific studies. And just to uh, footnote back what we were talking about earlier when we mentioned some scientific studies of um, people looking at the aspartame, um, Shackley's science here is is a non-biased science. These are peer-reviewed published journals. This is not Shackley going around and, you know, interviewing or, or whatever. It's, it's, it's actual science done by people who don't have a vested interest. So right. um, making sure that, that we cover that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for saying that point since we talked about that earlier. Mm -hmm. um, and then guaranteed. So at Shackley, everything is hundred percent guaranteed down to the bottom of that bottle. So you get down to the bottom of that you know, be complex and you're, you're tell, going to tell us that it didn't work the way you expected it to, you will get your money back. Mm -hmm. um, and that is to me as a, as someone who shares Shackley and as someone who takes Shackley, I feel I just, that just kind of seals the, the deal with comfort for me. Like, okay, all right, well, you know, worst comes to worst, at least, <laughs> at least you've right. got that guarantee, right? Absolutely. It's such a, such a wonderful thing. People can risk free then. There's not really a risk. Right. Um, you can try something. Yep. So let's just talk a little bit about if you were to get started. Um, you can always order any of our products individually, but we just thought it might be nice for you to see a few pairings um, of, a, of a nice place to start. So for um, younger kids, um, think about those um, Incredivites, the multivitamin, the DHA chews, those are called Mighty Smarts, and then that probiotic, which is ours, is called Optiflora. If they're a little bit bigger kids, let's say maybe they're uh, 10 to you know, whatever, teenagers, um, then look at these, the big kids pack, the Vitaly, the Omega Guard, which is our fish oil, and the probiotic again. Um, the parents pack, uh, Angie just talked to, talked about that, the Vitalizer, maybe an extra B complex and a stress relief. Maybe you want to do something where you combine a little bit for everybody. Maybe you do a kids pack, a parents pack, and then we have one of our protein shakes available. The Life Shake is available in a 30 serving pouch. Um, that you can get to. So we just wanted to pair a few things together for you to be able to kind of visualize how would this work in my life. And um, so those are some possible, um, some possible pairings. Mm -hmm. 
Wonderful. And, you know, I think we just wanted to close tonight reminding everybody how important this is. And I really, truly am grateful for all of you coming and joining us tonight. And we've, we've hit an hour, so you're all probably ready to get to the next part of your evening. But I wanted to remind you that today, more than 95% of all chronic disease is caused by our food choice, toxic food ingredients, and the lack of physical exercise. And I, and I believe and Becky, we, we both share this belief that it has never been more important than right now to take that first step in changing that pattern for your family. Mm -hmm. I think I think there's really never been a time in, in this the history of our culture that mm -hmm. uh, that this topic is more important. So I'm I'm just grateful that you have been on with us tonight. And I, I also want to remind you that that while this is a big topic and it and it it could instill some ideas of a big change that needs to happen. Uh, you know, take it one step at a time. Mm -hmm. And remember that you may not be there right now, but with one little step, you're going to be closer than you were yesterday. And yeah. um, so it's so that. good. So Angie, thank you so much. Thank you everyone for joining us. It's such good information. And um, I think that's it then. Yeah. Thank you so much, Becky. You too. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night.